Well, good morning. I'm Daniel, the Low Budget Outdoorsman, and today I wanted to talk to you about the Alpha Gal Red Meat Allergy. I uh, developed that allergy about four years ago. It's transmitted from tick bites, and I wanted to tell you, uh, and I wanted to warn you about the dangers both of the allergy and of uh, the Lone Star Tick, and a little bit on how to prevent yourself from coming into tick bites. If you're like me, uh, tick bites are part of being in the south in well a lot of places they're being they're coming more prevalent all the way up through the the northeast so if you're like me you didn't really uh, think too much about getting a tick bite you'd pull them off or you'd feel them crawling on you and it wasn't a big deal well about four years ago I uh, contracted the alpha gal red meat allergy uh, and it has varied because it's an allergy, it has varied reactions uh, across individuals. But mine are fairly severe, bordering on anaphylactic um, symptoms. I have the itching, the hives, the diarrhea, the vomiting, and the contracting of the, the airways. This allergy is one of the few, if not the only allergy, food allergy, that has a very delayed onset. So a couple of things. First, what is uh, what causes it? The alpha-gal is a carbohydrate. This carbohydrate, carbohydrate is found in all mammalian meat, with the exception of uh, people and some old world um, monkeys and apes. So because this alpha-gal carbohydrate is present in your dog or your cat or any of those, they're not going to contract this uh, red meat allergy when they're bitten by a tick. But what happens is a tick will bite a, another uh, animal, a deer primarily, that's the prime carrier and spreader of ticks. Uh, it'll bite a deer or a dog or something and then it'll fall off and then it'll eventually bite you. When it bites an, in, a person and it's already bitten another animal, what it's done is it's got from the bloodstream that carbohydrate, that alpha-gal carbohydrate in its saliva. When it starts biting you, it injects that carbohydrate, just because of it's already in its mouth parts, into your bloodstream. Since this carbohydrate is not normally introduced into the bloodstream in that manner, your body will send antibodies to fight against that uh, carbohydrate. That is where um, the allergy develops. Because it isn't uh, attacked until it enters the bloodstream, it has a delayed onset for symptoms. So if you eat something, it has to wait till it digests it about three to six to seven hours later when it's introducing it into the bloodstream. That's when you'll have those symptoms. Because the symptoms are three to eight hours after eating, depending on how fast you metabolize food, many people misdiagnose it. They may have a sausage biscuit for breakfast and have symptoms when they're eating a salad at lunch and they'll think well it's something that they've ate in the salad and it's really the what they had for breakfast so how dangerous is this like i said the symptoms can cause anaphylactic shock uh, so it's potentially deadly the other thing is it's very difficult to avoid coming in contact with this you might have something you eat for breakfast, say from a gas station, but that food came in contact. It might be a chicken sandwich, but that food had come in contact with some bacon grease that was already on the grill or some sausage grease that was already on the grill. That will, can cause you a reaction. In fact, if I have a chicken breakfast or a chicken biscuit from a gas station, a lot of times even that little bit of cross-contamination on the grill will cause my hands to start itching, and I'll start getting a little bit of hives later on that afternoon. Because it's an allergy like this, there's no known cure for it. So it's something you have to be very careful with. And it's something that's, like I said, very dangerous. Just in my circle of friends, I know several people who have already uh, contracted that. Um, local hospitals at the height of tick season are diagnosing uh, nearly 40 a month. And so it is spreading 
uh, and being diagnosed much more quickly. How to prevent it. The best means of prevention is by uh, spraying down with some bug spray. Now, us outdoorsmen don't like to do that, and it's sometimes inconvenient. The best thing to spray down with that I found is permethrin. Uh, you can buy it in an aerosol can, but to save money, as I like doing, it's the active ingredient in most um, dog flea and tick sprays or home flea sprays. Uh, if you get a uh, home flea spray, just look on what the active ingredient is. It's usually going to be the uh, top one, and it'll say permethrin. Permethrin. Now, permethrin is not necessarily exactly a repellent, but it kills the fleas and ticks, so it shouldn't be sprayed on your skin. But if, if you buy the little aerosol cans, like bug spray size cans, it's seven or eight dollars just for that one little can. But you can buy a whole gallon jug of the flea in a home spray, home flea spray, whatever, or a big thing, even larger than this, of dog flea and tick spray. And how permethrin works, how it's recommended to be used, uh, is to spray it on your clothes. Lay your clothes out or hang your clothes up. And spray it on your clothes until, let it soak into your clothes and then let them dry all the way. When it's dry, it's supposedly good through six wash cycles. But you don't want to, because it does kill the ticks, so it's a poison, you don't want to spray it directly on your skin. The last three years I've been using permethrin as my preventative measure, and it's done well. I've only gotten two tick bites, and I don't know that either one of them was a lone star tick. One was real small, it was difficult to tell. Um, and so I've stayed, been able to keep away from tick bites. So spray your clothes down with permethrin, and then when you're going out in the field, tuck your pants into your boots and tuck your shirt into your pants. Those are the two best things. That way the bugs can't bypass your clothing and go straight up your pant legs or crawl up your pant legs off of some long grass and crawl under your shirt. Doing that, it'll almost eliminate your tick bites because the ticks will die as they crawl up your pants and your shirt before they can find a spot where there's no permethrin. If you have the permethrin on there, they will, it will kill them before they have a chance to do any real damage. Obviously for home spray and dog spray, a lot of it will be scented. Spray it uh, on your clothes, like I said, let it soak in, and then since it's supposed to be good for six wash cycles, go ahead and wash them in your scent-free laundry detergent and your scent-free dryer sheets. And that will usually knock away the scent, the aftermarket scent, because when the active ingredient is only going to be about 0.5% of the total product or 0.25% of the total product. So you can wash your clothes and the scent will be taken away, but you'll still have the benefits of having permethrin on your clothing. Like I said, this isn't anything to be uh, taken lightly. If you like steak, I used to love steak. If you like having a hamburger, if you like grabbing a sandwich from the gas station, on your road trips, you really need to do everything in your power to prevent yourselves from getting bit by the Lone Star Tick. So the alpha-gal carbohydrate is the allergy, the symptoms uh, can go all the way up to anaphylactic shock. As a hunter, why do I still hunt white-tailed deer? Well that is, my friends, the good thing. Since this alpha-gal is a carbohydrate, and not a protein, it means it is stored in the fat and the sinew of the animal. The problem with our commercial beef and pork is it's so fattened up at market that you can't really get a piece of meat that doesn't have fat on it. And we all like having a good marbled steak, or I used to. But because it's a carbohydrate and it's stored in the fat, I'm able to eat deer meat but I have to process it myself and I have to meticulously cut off all of the fat. I separate each muscle group. Um, I cut out any fat that might be in between them. I cut out the, the sinew that's in between them. And by doing this, I've been able to still enjoy the tasty delicacy that is whitetail deer. So don't lose hope completely 
if you have this allergy. Now, I'm not a doctor, and as a disclaimer, anything I'm telling you here, you're going to have to uh, take at your own risk. Don't assume I know what I'm talking about. This is personal experience. Uh, if you have this allergy, ask your doctor first before you try any new dietary uh, adventures. But for me, if I process the deer myself so I know that I've cut off all the fat, then I'm able to, I'm, and to start the season, I'll always have a small piece just to see if my allergy's gotten worse or if it's the same. And so I'll have a small piece, nothing happens the next day, then I'll have you know a regular meal with it. And for the past three years, I've been doing that and I haven't had any issues. But like I said, you're gonna get a lot less meat than you normally do off of your deer because you really have to cut off a lot and err on the side of caution. But I'm still able to fill up the freezer with some deer meat in the fall and that is the only red meat I can eat. Um, and I suppose I could eat other types of wild game if I processed them myself. And once again, I'd have to cut off all of that fat and just strictly stick to the protein because the alpha gal is a carbohydrate and not a protein. I hope this has been informative. I hope you've uh, been warned to the dangers of this alpha gal carbohydrate red meat allergy. Enjoy your hunting and be safe. I'm Daniel, the Low Budget Outdoorsman. God bless.